Well, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Well, Satan had me down. Jesus lifted me. Come on. I'm just going to read one verse, or actually a couple of them, I guess. The third verse, 37th chapter of the third verse, we're talking about a mission. Last week I told you about a mission. The, I'm going to talk about manu maneuvering. How many know what maneuvering means? You might know that means go in and out whichever direction you need to go to get to where you're going. And the last one I'll talk about managing. Uh, our lives. How many know we need to manage our life right? Is that okay? Uh, I was listening to T.D. Jakes last night and he was telling how how he said uh, including himself, most preachers, we, go, we, we preach all these good things but then when we get out of church we're having a hard time doing them. Come on, preacher. Hello? Let me know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And uh, but he said, you know, the whole the whole deal is we just got to trust the Lord. And, and even as frail and as uh, failures that we have. Anybody ever had any failures? Uh, closets. Anybody have any closets? You know, things in the closet. Nobody else knows. Only then God knows. Now everybody else knows. All of us have got something that's wrong with us. Hello. That's the whole deal in a nutshell. And... You know, if we start picking one another out, trying to find fault with somebody else, I mean, no, it always come back to haunt us. Always come back to haunt us. And, uh, but anyway, I just want to, we talked about last week, we talked about what our mission is here at the church, and that mission is to, to get other people in church, not just have a church that's full, but that we're doing something to reach the lost, to reach the city, to reach people that don't go to church, or that have needs that we can help with. Uh, our, our goal ought to be that this ought to be an outreach here that we can reach people no matter what walk of life. Amen. Black, white, red, blue, green, purple, polka dot, whatever, hello. Amen. It doesn't matter how I many know that's what our goal is to reach somebody for Jesus. Do you know you can't help everybody? That's right. 
Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some people don't want to be saved. They want to, I mean, know that. But I want the ones that want to be saved, I want them here. 37th chapter, first, uh, third verse. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old, in his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all of his other brethren, they hated him, could not speak peaceably unto them. Then Joseph had a dream and he told all of his brothers and they hated him yet even more. I'm going to talk about that right quick. Father, I thank you for the word of God. I ask you to give me the wisdom, the strength, and to say what I'm supposed to say and not to say anything I'm not supposed to say. But Father, just I ask you to give us strength to encourage the people that are here today. Lift them up in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you for it. Amen. I was, look, I was studying a little bit about Jacob, and uh, they changed his name to Israel. How many remember that in the Bible? God changed his name from Jacob, I mean, yeah, to Israel. And it said Israel, or Jacob, loved Joseph more than his others. And I said this last week, and probably a lot of y'all agree with me. There's kids in here, you have kids, and some of you get along with them better than you do others. Yeah. Do I hear an amen? Amen. amen. So some it just won't listen to you, but there are some that you, you draw close to them and you, you bond with them. How many know that? And there are church people. How many understand that people in the church, we learn to bond to one another. Are you, are you with me? Yeah. How many understand that? We learn that we get close together with, with people in the church and uh, it's it become one big family. That's what it ought to be. How many believe God's people ought to be a family? Yeah. The Bible says a family that sticks together <laughs> stays together. Yeah. It may not have been biblical, but somebody said that anyway. Right? Yeah. And a house divided against itself cannot stand. Same way a nation is divided. These brothers got so mad at Joseph because they had a dream and he told them his dream. But you see, God was preparing Joseph even when he was 17, he was 17 years old at this particular time, he was preparing Joseph for a ministry for something that farther down the road, years and years, 15, 17 years later, he was preparing Joseph for that. How many realize God will prepare you for something that may be 10 years from now before you do it? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. It may be 20 years. It may be 50 years. I don't know, but... Whatever it is, God prepares you now for something that's going to happen later on so you can bless other people. Hello? Are you with me? Now, when Joseph had this dream, you know the dream. Some of y'all remember the dream. He said uh, he, he seen himself above everybody and everybody was coming and bowing down to him. Do you remember that in the Bible? Everybody and his brother, That's what made the brothers mad. The main thing. First, they sing the coat of many colors, Dolly Parton song. Huh? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. And uh, the first thing he got, they got upset with him was about the coat of many colors and that his dad loved him, quote, more than anybody else. Now, when Joseph had this dream and he told him uh, the dream, his brothers really got mad at him. And you know the story goes that one day the brothers took off. I think there was 11 more. There was 12 total. And there 11 of them took off to go to to herd sheep and different things they were doing. And it ticked them off so bad, one of the brothers said, hey, we're going to have to figure out something. We're going to kill him. Love him. His own brother, right? Yeah. He's going to kill him. We're going to kill him. And I think it was Reuben that said, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that, man. No, we've got to do something else. We can't do that. We just put him in a pit. As I told you last week, from the pit to the palace. Y'all remember that? Yeah. From the pit to the palace. And so, Joseph, they said, no, 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 let's don't kill him. I think it was Reuben, if not mistaken. He said, let's don't kill him. Let's just put him in a pit. Okay, guys. We'll, we'll yeah. take his coat and we'll put, sprinkle it with blood. And we'll take it back to daddy and tell him an animal got a hold of him and killed him. And that'll be it. But at least we won't kill him. And all of a sudden, they put him in the pit, 
And some people came by going into Egypt. Remember the story? Yeah. They came by and one of the boys says, wait a minute, let's sell him. Let's get a little cab. So they sold him. Thinking that they would never see Joseph again. They were ticked off. They finally took the coat to their dad and said, he's dead. An animal must have tore him up. Here's his coat. And, uh, of course, his dad was distraught. He was upset to no end that his son, the one he loved, the one he cared about. I imagine he was, I think he was one of the youngest. He wasn't the youngest, but I believe he was one of the youngest. And at 17 years old, he went with him. And uh, when his dad found out about it, he was distraught. He was upset to no end. But I'm, I'm building a story to show you what can happen in your life when you learn how to maneuver your life and trials come, tribulations come, problems come. I could go to each one of you and you could tell me stories of tragedies and problems that's happened in your life and things with your family and with loved ones. And, and we'd all have stories in here. Hello? We all have something that we've gone through some tragic situation through some problem in our life that Nobody else knows about, but yet God knows about it. Hello? Amen. And so, we've got to learn how to maneuver the situations that we get ourselves into. And, and when I said that, sometimes we get ourselves into the situation. Amen. Come on, come on. Yeah. No. Oh, At all, God had His hand, the Bible says, on Joseph. Hello? Yeah. How many believe God's got His hand on you? You think everything's gone wrong? How many know what I'm talking about? You think like everything is in a mess, the job situation, the house situation, uh, your money situation. Come on now. Everything that you can think of can go wrong. It will go wrong. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But you have to learn how to maneuver around those situations. I think sometimes God allows pain so we can call on Him. Yeah. I don't think He gives you pain. Love it. Because that comes from the devil. I mean, no. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It. But I think he allows us to go through some things in our life that we can grow stronger. How many has ever gone through something and you prayed more? Yeah. I remember 9 11 happened. Man, churches were filled. Yeah. Churches were filled. A few months after that, they all. I hope we don't have another 9 11, but if we don't get back to God, we may have something like that. Hello? Because God allows the devil to do certain things. I mean, I understand that. Oh, I don't believe that. Well, let's talk about Job right quick. The Bible says Job was a perfect and an upright man. He eschewed evil. In other words, he hated evil. But the devil, walking across heaven, and how God let him in heaven. Oh, yeah, he was one of God's chosen, right? And he talked to God one day, or God talked to him, said, Hey, hey, Lucifer, hey, Satan, have you desired my servant Job? Well, yeah, I have, God, but the problem is, you know, you got a hedge about him. I can't get to him. Every time I want to get to him, you throw up a hedge. you got a, a roadblock, and I can't get to him. Hello. I mean, no, the Holy Spirit's like a block for us, a covering for us, right? He's like a hedge for us. You need the Holy Spirit all the time, amen? Yeah. Amen. And uh, he said, every time I try to do something, you always have a hedge about it. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You can do anything you want to, except kill him. Hello. Right? Y'all yeah. going on with the story with me. Yeah. So what happened? His children died. His wife got mad, turned him, cursed God and died. But you just, you just, no good, rotten, no good. Yeah. I mean, that's the sweetheart, the one that loved it. But, you know, she was fed up. Uh, Come on. His camel's all gone. His horse is all gone. His cattle all gone. Hello? Y'all yeah. remember that? Yeah. And God said, okay, yeah, he let him. And he wound up in a, in a place where he had boils all over him. Now, I want to tell you, if we're, we were Christians in, in our day and we wound up in that situation, we'd say, God don't love me. He don't care about me. And the devil sit on our shoulder. Yep, you're right. He don't care about you. You're no good. You're right. Hello. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, he's never gone through some problems and the devil says, he, God don't care about you because if he cared about you, you wouldn't be going 